wrestling. Did, oh? did we watch wrestling this week? We did. Oh, we my did. goodness. Nothing interesting happened, though. No, no, no well, surprising moment. See you later. <laughs> uh, no, I did watch wrestling this week, and I did something I haven't done in a long ass time, mm-hmm. um, which is I actually watched Raw, like from start to finish. I'm uh, not gonna yeah, lie to you. That's tough. Most, most times, I I just keep on top of this stuff via clips and yep. like news and that kind of thing. Because who's got three hours on a Monday night? Honestly. <laughs> Now I I knew he was only coming out to the main event, so I did my usual thing of mm-hmm. like letting an hour and a half of the show go by so I can fast forward the stuff that doesn't matter, mm-hmm. and uh, pretty much caught up by the end. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, uh, who was that you were talking about? <laughs> uh, oh, CM Punk. Oh, a one chick magnet punk. In fact, chick magnet punk. C yes. Montgomery punk. If uh, I was to ever meet him, I would kind of have to be like, listen. Do I call you Chick Magnet, or are we are we like close enough that I can use the nickname? How's this? What work? is the first name here? Do we go see? Like I I imagine people just call him Punk. Well, yeah, 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 or Phil, or Phil. yeah, yeah, no. or stop hitting me. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. What, I, I, what <laughs> percentage of people do you think in his life refer to him as Phil at this point? Well, his wife, maybe, maybe. Um, it's probably it. I yeah, mean, if you gotta okay, have so choose, like maybe like no, AJ from time to know. time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No disrespect to uh, to those of us, you know, with nicknames or whatever, or <laughs> those of us named Phil, for example. Uh, but if you have to choose between Phil and Punk, I I yeah. think Punk is the way you want to lean. Yeah. I think it's it's not like the Undertaker, who I'm convinced like still makes people call him Undertaker at home. <laughs> you know, like Michelle McCool walks in with the groceries and she's like, hey, Mark, I got you the, the bananas you like. And he's like, "Ooh," she's like, <laughs> Undertaker, I got you the bananas that you like. You know, and he's like, thanks, Michelle. And she's like, what's my last name? He's like, I'm not saying that. <laughs> and, oh, I can't remember the other uh, girl that was in Lay Cool. Remember when Michelle McCool? Layla, yeah. Layla! There he, well, yeah, I guess that yeah, makes yeah. sense. I was like, why is Layla always here? Just... I always liked her. I don't know what oh. happened to her. <laughs> but anyways, oh, Survivor know. Series. Yeah. yeah. Lots of, like, first of all, Survivor Series, two great Survivor Series War Games matches, I thought. I thought so, uh, yeah. Lots of fun. Um I thought it was kind of ridiculous how they were like, Randy Orton's not here. I'm like, it's his first match in two years. He can't be on time. <laughs> you know, like, come on. But uh, in the end, you know, they they paid it off and you heard him come out for the uh, the War Games match. And you're like, all right, well, I guess it is just going to be Randy. And you know what? That's fine. That's fine. We're, we're uh, uh, Randy Orton is a perfectly cromulent Christmas gift to us wrestling uh, fans. Uh, absolutely. Uh, but then... You're watching it, and this is a total Triple H thing because he used to get me with this all the time in NXT. Mm-hmm. You're watching, and everyone's oh, okay. happy, and the the little little thing shows up in the corner that's like copyright, you know, whatever. And you're like, oh well, the little thing's up there, so it yeah. must be over. <laughs> that's, that's the end. Right? And then suddenly, Kevin Owens smashes Sami Zayn's face into the ring, mm-hmm. or CM Punk shows up. Yeah, yeah. So, like, this is something that Triple H has done before, where like the copyright thing goes up which is the pro wrestling symbol of the pay-per-view is over guys. Yep. <laughs> and uh, it was like uh, when Kevin Owens just came into NXT, Sami Zayn had won the NXT championship shows going off the air. Everybody's happy. Copyright thing goes up. Kevin Owens ends up uh, turning on Sami Zayn, yep. power bombing him on the apron. Uh, yep. So leading up, to a cult of personality going mm. uh, uh, going off as it did. I remember just like when it did that exact moment that it did, there was like a brief mm. part of me that like was like, you know, like, is this actually happening? You know, it, yeah. it was, <laughs> like getting older. It was late at night. I was tired. I was like, yeah. this, I might have slipped out of consciousness uh, and am yeah. dreaming yeah, yeah. this in some way. But leading up to uh, CM Punk coming out. Mm. So WWE's kind of message to the media or dirt cheese or whatever you want to call them was 
look, we're saying no to CM Punk for now. They left the yeah. door open in the future, but they said, uh, you know, like somewhere down the line, if it makes sense. But right now we're, you know, it, it doesn't make sense for us. So, yep. so it's a no for now. But, and they didn't just have like, like Triple H say that. They had everyone say yeah, that. Yeah. Like that was, from Nick Khan down, everyone was like, nope, not happening. And they told people, they were like, we really want this out that he's not going to be there because we don't want people to be disappointed. Yeah. Now you can believe the official story that this all came together right at the horse. Like, oh, when we said that, we meant we, it. We rolled into Chicago and realized, wait a minute, doesn't CM Punk live here? But there was all of these teases leading up to it. Mm -hmm. And people would ask WWE about these teases. They'd say, that's just, that's just a coincidence. So one case was Shinsuke Nakamura mm -hmm. used a GTS on Raw two weeks in a row. So yep. people were like, that has to be a tease for CM Punk coming in. Even Kenta, the guy who... Invented. originated that move he was like Kenta, well i guess i'm going to serve yeah i guess i'm going to survivor series then so so people reach out to them they're like no 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 there's nothing to do with anything and nakamura stopped doing the gts mm -hmm. and grayson waller put out a few like he would uh use quotes that cm punk had used before Corey graves did the yep. same thing and again, the, the response was, no, no, uh, guys, you're reading too much into this. Yeah. Whatever. So a very, so, and then of course it was a big surprise when he did show up. So there was a, like, I'm almost 100% certain that this was intentionally done. And oh, yeah. when I say like a hundred percent, I mean like 90, 92%. So I'm as certain about it as I am anything else in my life. Yeah, yes. There's always but, a 0.01 <laughs> chance, but at the same time, I feel okay. So look at the contrast between how AEW brought CM Punk in and how WWE brought CM Punk because they're uh they're similar yet entirely different. And I do believe that the different ways that both companies handled bringing in CM Punk really illustrates the differences between the two companies. So AEW brought CM Punk in and it was the first dance. And the idea was you all know CM Punk is, is coming. Yeah. Okay. Like, I uh, like, it's the whole idea that our fan base, they read the news, they they're educated on what's going on. They know CM mm -hmm. Punk is coming in. Triple H a little bit more old school than what they're doing mm. uh, in AEW. Triple H's mindset would be like, well, hold on a second. Yeah. If we want, like, surprises are mm. so important in wrestling. Some of wrestling's greatest moments of all time has been when you didn't think something was going to happen, and then it did, mm -hmm. and it blew your fucking mind. <laughs> Sometimes so some of its worst moments, too. <laughs> Well, yeah, okay. Granted, that uh, is also the case. But when it's done well, it's a, like an incredible moment. And I do think CM Punk's uh, re-debut uh, in the WWE is, is an incredible moment that people re will oh, yeah. live for a long time. And part of that is a huge chunk of the audience really didn't think it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But like part of them thought maybe it's possible because that's that's what my attitude was. I was like, if if this is if he is coming in and this is a, a, a surprise, it's one of the greatest secrets they've ever kept in wrestling. And it was. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, not only did they actively work against the rumor, mm -hmm. you know, being like, nope, not going to happen. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Guys. And doing it in a way that like, you know, the way that AEW counted on people reading that stuff. Yeah was the same thing here. They, they were counting yep. on people reading that stuff yeah. and being like, oh, all right, yeah, okay, maybe not. And, you know, the idea of, like, because WWE is so controlled, you know, the mm -hmm. idea of them being like, no, 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 we want to make sure we people aren't angry about this. Like, we don't want to have a hot crowd on yeah. our hands. See, that's you what know? convinced like, me when they said that, yeah. when they said, we really want this out there because we don't want people to be disappointed. I was like, oh, 
guys, they're yeah. serious. <laughs> like, well, that because that, yeah. that seems really reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know? <laughs> Most you of know? wrestling, not so much. But that you're like, okay, yeah, I, I see your point there. You know, <laughs> I was and like, then, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I understood. <laughs> then when he came walking out, uh, my only thought was like, what a great swerve! Like they did it yeah. so well, and that's that's to me that's all Triple H. That's all his because Triple H loves surprises, but he also loves to like. He loves the subterfuge mm-hmm. of the wrestling. I don't business. understand what that word is, but I feel like I agree with like, you. Like the the sneakiness of it all. The like, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Ah, we're gonna do this, and then you know you're gonna. Ex- he loves to subvert expectation, mm-hmm. and what is so cool about this one is that he subverted expectation, then subverted another expectation and another yeah. one to <laughs> almost come full circle to the point where you're like, of course it was going to happen. you know. <laughs> and it's like, it was just so masterfully done. And I truly, truly hope. And, you know, I think that I, I've been hard on CM Punk mm-hmm. in, in instances on this very program, um, you know, but, and I have my opinions about him, like as a person and a businessman, as mm-hmm. a ring performer he's amazing he's the best on the mic that's ever happened so i'm not sad to see more of that Mm -hmm. you know now it will be interesting to see how much and i think a lot of the roster is taking it this way too uh you know he says i've changed you know and it's like "Um, yeah (laughs) Changed from when, like 2013 yeah. or four months ago. <laughs> like, exactly. You know, <laughs> and it's like there was and I, I read a few people who sort of uh, had the same impression as I did in that, like his promo on Raw when he came back mm-hmm. was great. Mm-hmm. You know, love the wise man bits, love the, you know, I got to leave to come back to get the best of this, you know, terrific, terrific. But when he's like. I'm home. I'm like, uh, are you? Because you've spent the better part of a decade not being very happy to be anywhere near this place. And again, maybe people have changed. Maybe things have happened. But like, it seems a little disingenuous for him to, within literally four months, go Mm -hmm. from like taking pot shots at them on collision to suddenly showing up and being like, I'm home. You know, right. Like, I I like, also found it disingenuous. Um, I also thought, you know, like, because when I was watching that whole thing, I was like, okay, oh, we're back to PG Punk uh, feuding with John Laurinaitis ooh. again. Um, Woohoo! People power. <laughs> But then when he and and I wasn't sure about the promo as it was going, I was like, yeah, like he's not dropping a pipe bomb here. But yeah, then he turned to the camera right at the end yeah. and gave a and gave a smirk that might as well have been a wink and says, yeah. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make money. And then he runs around the ring. Yeah. Um, Which to me undid everything that he had said. Well, I um, see it was that line that to me, it was like, OK, I'm ready to go on whatever ride this is going to be. Oh, yeah. But don't I, get me wrong. I'm not I'm upset about it. But yeah. <laughs> but I feel like when I think about like the the angle that they're building for him with Seth Rollins now, where Seth Rollins, first of all, huge baby face right now. Yep. So interesting that they would choose him to go up against Punk. Mm-hmm. Um. And also, you know, Seth Rollins called him a hypocrite on Raw, which mm-hmm. is like his serious, like Punk's serious detractors. That's their their yep. big point right now is like, look at all the things you said and now you're back. And you had Seth Rollins point that out on mm-hmm. your show. And this guy is coming in and he's got a huge baby face reaction on pay-per-view. He got, uh, I would say, 99% positive mm-hmm. reaction in Nashville. Now, like I... There was like a, some anti-punk oh, signs yeah. and, uh, you know, it, there's still going to be some crossover AEW fans there. Um, so I have a feeling that they are going to lean into sort of punk's uh, real reputation mm-hmm. as being a controversial figure. Seth Rollins is going to kind of be the defender of WWE, but I feel mm-hmm. what CM Punk is doing right now is he's playing a guy playing a baby face 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. His character has come in and said, oh, I'm going to make these fans love me. They're all going to buy my T-shirt. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'll just give this little wink to the camera to say, I'm here to make money. So I yeah. think eventually down the road, he's going to go heel or or something. And uh, I think that you, know, you have to turn him heel. Oh, like yeah. you are not going to get anywhere with CM Punk coming out every week and being like, I'm really happy to be here. And well, you I'm can do it for a few months. My friends. And you, you can know, do it you for know, a few months for you sure. Could. Yeah, you could. But I really think that the idea of like, yeah, no, I, I'm just screwing with you all because really I hate it here as much as I ever hated it. <laughs> and I'm doing it for the money is, you know, classic healing. Yeah. And we know that Triple H loves to to like play into that kind of that kind of behavior, you know, the like I'm better than you guys, but you know I'll I'll play along for a while. But in the end, I'm here for me, yeah. you know. And now that he has, because in AEW he was allowed to run rampant, like he yeah. was just allowed yeah. to run around and do whatever he wanted to whoever he wanted. And he was booking everything himself and, you know, kind of thing. Now he's back in WWE where there are going to be people telling him what to mm-hmm. do. And now that he's going to have that guidance and those uh, boundaries to kind of stay within that lane to stay in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Heel Punk is the best. Yeah. Yeah. Because He doesn't have to worry about any of the other crap. You know, he's just going to go out there and be a heel with whoever he's feuding with. And that, to me, is where they're going to make the real money and remind a lot of people of how good CM Punk really is. Yeah. And I do think that this run is going to be important for his legacy. Um, Yeah. He lost a lot of fans, you know, like he went to AEW. Like what happened in AEW with CM Punk sucks because Mm -hmm. it. I feel like the like after it happened, the company lost all the momentum that they had mm-hmm. built up. And I also think it split the fan base because I, I believe before that happened, most fans of CM Punk mm-hmm. were also fans of the elite and most fans of the elite were also yep. CM Punk fans. And you split them up when that happened. And I, I think because of it, the elite also lost mm-hmm. uh, some fans and, and Punk's reputation uh, outside of the ring, like real, like you know, yep. was was severely harmed by by what went on. If he can go into WWE, uh, you know, with an attitude of like, look, I'm I've been humbled. I'm I'm grateful mm-hmm. to be here, uh, you know. And if he's willing to work with them as opposed yes. to just like exist amongst them. Yeah. Then, then yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'll see like a, from, from what's been reported, you know, um, the situation was WWE didn't reach out to him. He reached out to them. Yeah. And when they went back to him, there was like, here are some things that need to be agreed upon. Yeah. Um, I'm also hearing was... he's got like behavior clauses in the contract and, and things like that, which I imagine is standard for a lot of people. Well, but, yeah, there's you know, codes of conduct in like every like, contract, right? That's why he got they, fired from his last job. Well, yeah, but I think that <laughs> in this, like if something starts to go sour, because yeah. CM Punk is kind of one of those guys with an expiry date. Mm-hmm. And this is why I'm hoping that they use him in blocks Mm-hmm. in WWE and not just like let him be an every week thing. Like don't you don't yeah. need to make him a part-timer like Lesnar or Reigns, but like let's do a few months with CM Punk, let's do a few months off. Let's Yeah, let's I I think fresh, that would be know? good for him too, you know? Like he strikes yeah. me as a guy who you know, take a vacation, dude. Yeah, Phil, go <laughs> just know? like work Things out. Things aren't so bad. Just take you it know, easy. let's just and and that's the thing, right? Is he has a bit of an expiry date after yeah. a few months. He starts to get sour about things, mm-hmm. and and there's just people like that. I, I've known a lot of people like that in my professional life too. Who like for the first ninety days they're there, they're like, this is the greatest thing I've ever done, and then you know that ninety day period expires and they're like i hate it here it's the worst yeah. nothing is the best you know and, and that kind of and punk's kind of like that mm-hmm. so if you kind of bring him in and out and you know really are strategic yeah with who you pair him up with and mm-hmm. the types of stories you put like and you know what like wouldn't a wouldn't a cm punk run in 
NXT be something? Even if oh it's just God. for a couple of weeks. I would love that. That would be you know? so cool. That sounds like the kind of thing he would want to do too, right? Yeah. Like, hey, go in there and wrestle Carmelo Hayes or Ilya and, Dragunov or something. And like that. here's the thing. We know this is Throwing probably chase you. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably Punk's last run, right? Like this he's yeah, I mean he, he's 45 this is it. years old. Yeah. So he is gonna want to establish his next sort of step mm-hmm. in his career after this. And you know, unfortunately, we don't have Dusty Rhodes teaching promos at right. the NXT Performance Center anymore. Wouldn't it be amazing if CM Punk oh, was God, dead? you have yeah. HBK running the joint? Yeah, CM Punk as in you know the a teaching or head coach type role. Oh my God, you'd do yeah, so well. Awesome. He'd have to go to Florida, which I don't begrudge mm-hmm. him not wanting to do. No, but you know, there's there's so much more like. The WWE machine is just so much bigger Mm -hmm. that CM Punk fits into it better. Yeah. You know, and that's not a knock on AEW because AEW is 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 doing incredible for what it is. Like, Mm -hmm. let's be honest, it's pretty much just a gassed up version of like Ring of Honor. You know, there's not. Yeah, but succeeding huge, like real, but doing really deals, well, real yeah. pay per view revenue. Like their exactly. pay per view revenue is way up mm. this year because they added a bunch of pay per views and they all do as well as the other yeah. ones. So yeah, they've had and, a, and a it, very successful year based on that. And that's not a shot at AEW. It's just like yeah. if we're looking at levels of you know companies. WWE yeah. is up here, and AEW even at its best is down here. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a, a personality and a it, it'd be kind of like if you know. If Roman Reigns went to AEW tomorrow, it would feel out of place. Yes, yes. Because you would feel like he's way too big. It kind of felt that way when Edge showed up. And um, you're like, it's it's cool that Edge is here, but like, he kind of is better than this. There you know? was a collision taping where Adam Copeland came out and there was only 2,000 people in the building. Mm-hmm. And I just knew that that whole hard cam side was empty. And so, yeah, it did feel like, oh, my God, like, here's this yeah. huge star who had who like sold out uh, the Scotiabank Arena in Toronto at ridiculous ticket prices, by <laughs> the way, for his last match. And, and like now he's in front of like a half empty, you know, college yeah. arena. Um, it did feel like like, ooh, yeah, this this like it, it's it's different mm. to see his level of star on a smaller stage yeah. and to what you were saying about punk on the larger stage, when he came out in the all state arena and remember they, there was no stage for that show. Yeah. They packed 17,000 people in there. So when CM punk came out to that roar mm-hmm. after, you know, I'd seen him on the collision uh, episode in Toronto with 5,000 yeah. people in there. Like it was like, Oh, he's back on the big stage and that's wwe's yeah. biggest advantage over aew yes. is that like they are a level up in terms of like the mm-hmm. pop and like the stage the grandness of their stage is like yeah a well, level up the amount of fans you know like yeah they will pull in a million viewers million and a half viewers for raw mm. without, like that's a bad show for them yeah. Whereas AEW still hovers around that nine hundred thousand million dollar mark for their like marquee shows, let alone the stuff like Collision, you know. Yeah. So yeah. it's just a matter of of being a right size fish for the right size pond, mm-hmm. and you know maybe that was part of his problem in AEW. Maybe he was just too restricted in terms of like he's a big. He's a big character. I don't mean like he's a big character. Yeah. But he is a big character. He is what they talk about when they say everyone's larger than life. You know, yeah. like that kind of thing. Whereas, you know, a lot of those guys, like it, you look at like Brian Danielson mm-hmm. and how seamlessly he went from WWE That's to true. AEW. Mm-hmm. But he's always been a much quieter type of guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's you true. know, like not quite as big in his presentation his stuff was about psychology and and presentation and things like that and he manages to work that really well but guys like edge and cm punk you know they didn't just have one wrestlemania yeah or two or three wrestlemanias you know and they were headlining those things more often than not and also at least in big marquee matches so to do kind of to go 
down that and you know have to bring yourself down a little bit in terms of your presentation of character it's got to be difficult yeah yeah i mean um it's weird because like the edge thing threw me off a bit because he's always been in wwe Right. So like he's always had the big jumbotron, the big presentation, uh, Mm -hmm. the big crowds. And and so we haven't seen him on a smaller scale. But then I was thinking, it was like, why didn't Christian feel that difference? I was like, well, I'd seen Christian on Impact. Right. Or on TNA. You know, so like him other places. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, but like AEW is doing this Continental Classic. Which. Yeah. God, they loved they love tournaments more than they love title belts in AEW. Oh no, I don't know about that. They love to well, I mean, even better than that. Why not have a tournament for three title belts? Here, okay, here's a question. The perfect With, tournament. Without Googling, <laughs> do you think AEW has held more tournaments this year or has more has, titles? Uh, like, is the number of titles equal to, lesser, or more than the number of tournaments that they've had this year? Are we counting just AEW titles or can we loop in Ring of Honor titles? Oh, no, we got it. We got to loop in Ring of Honor as well. Like you any title even, that's like, been defended on an yeah. AEW show, yeah, I'd say yeah. there's What's... definitely more titles than tournaments. Okay. I don't know the answer to this, by the way. I just, <laughs> if you know, anyway, like to try and name all the titles in AEW without Googling, oh, like yeah. I don't know if I could do it. You know. Yeah, it, well, yeah, I mean, you've got uh, TNT, TBS, mm-hmm. International, the World Title, world the title um, Tag Team, Tag Team, Trios, Women's World, Trios, um, uh, Hardcore Invitational Classic. Technically, um, there's a belt for the Owen Hart. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's you know. true. You've got um, the There's ROH. a diamond ring that's up for grabs every year. MJF always wins it. <laughs> Yep. Uh, then you've got all the Ring of Honor titles. Mm-hmm. They're like at the very beginning, there were Triple A titles that were defended. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kenny Kenny Omega the, uh, won Impact the Impact title, World yeah. title, uh, and I think Christian won the the World title uh, on a, uh, another show. So that that's been mixed in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of titles, a lot of yeah. titles. Yeah. I think it's something that AEW should look at fixing uh, because. Mm-hmm. Titles, while they are, you know, like we all know this is a pretend sport yes. and it's it titles are not actually, you know, you didn't actually win that or whatever. Uh, um, they're still important and they're not just important as props. They're important, I think, for the talent involved mm-hmm. to see that they have places to go. You know what I mean? Like if you come into a place and it's just like nebulous and titles don't mean anything and they kind of don't because they have so many of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're kind of like, okay, how am I going to like move up the ladder here? How am I going to, going to grow as a performer? How, like, how am I going to do that? Well, normally it's, you win this title and then maybe you win this title and maybe that puts you in the mix for this title. And then you do a tag run because wrestling's the best when it's about a title. I'm sorry. It is. Yeah. Um, and uh, AEW has so many titles that they seem to not care about mm-hmm. that it makes the talent not care about it. Yeah. And the way that AEW tells stories is not like WWE in that AEW is more match-based versus mm-hmm. like storytelling. Well, that's a whole you know? thing right now too, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, they they have story in that, you mm-hmm. know, this Adam Cole and MJF are friends. That's, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. But what their stuff is more about is like, I've always wanted to see this guy and this guy. Yeah. You know, I've, I've always yeah. wanted to see these people working and, and that devalues your titles as well as the sheer number of them, because I'm not caring if there's a title involved. Mm-hmm. Like to me, I, I don't get excited about the last few, like the, the MJF, uh, Jay White, it's a great match, but I didn't get excited about it because there was no real, like, way that Jay was winning that match. Yeah, yeah, and even I if know. he did, like, it'd be like, all right, he'd already stolen the belt, so okay, <laughs> like, and it. But when you know, if someone is, you know, Austin is chasing that title and then he slams into HBK at WrestleMania, hoisting that belt at the end means a hell of a lot. Mm-hmm. So I think that AEW, and I think this is also just a little bit more of t- Tony Khan's inexperience with the entertainment side 
of the mm-hmm. sports entertainment. You know, he doesn't have TV experience. WWE has buckets of it. So they know how to play things up a little better in terms of what they focus on. But, you know, aside from all that, AEW is pretty good. <laughs> well, look, any AEW show that you turn into, you're going to see a fun match, probably a few mm-hmm. of them. But kind of like what I think people have complained about is sometimes it, it's just like, here's a match and yeah. there's no reason for it. But also mm-hmm. like the person that wins that match, I, I don't think a lot of fans have confidence that that means they're going to move on and wrestle yeah. a higher rank star and eventually, you know, like get a title exactly. shot. Be, like, cause it feels like everybody's sort of on their own Island. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like Wardlow came in and he squashed some guy. And it's like, okay, I know, like, you're not going to do yeah. it. Like, I've seen this for years. He's just going to come in, squash some guys. Maybe he'll win the TNT title and then lose it again in a few days and then yeah. be, like, gone for Oh, the FTW title. We forgot that one. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, well I, I like the FTW title. Me too. But that's just another yeah. title in AEW. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah. We never, never even mentioned that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, like, there's no clear path for every mm-hmm. wrestler to get to the top. And I always say, like, it's, uh, you know, it, we, like, remember they said when AEW started, this is going to be a, a yeah. sports-centric product where wins and losses matter. There has never been a wrestling company where no. li- less sports-centric, where wins and losses mattered uh, less. Like, yes. it's the complete Mid-90s opposite. WCW's win-loss yeah. record meant more than your AEW loss record. So, uh, there's a few things. And in last week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer, you know how everybody says Meltzer's like a shill for AEW? He mm. tore them to shreds this entire <laughs> newsletter. Like, nobody that actually reads the newsletter says that. But, like, um, and the, they're, it's just this idea that if somebody wins a bunch of matches and you know, it doesn't matter yeah. then like it, it takes you out of it. And yeah. one point that was brought up was the champions are completely out of the world title hunt. Like if you're the international champion, you're nowhere near the world title. So mm-hmm. orange Cassidy successfully defended his title, won every match, won like 50 matches in a row with the international championship. Why didn't he get a world title shot? Isn't he one of the best wrestlers in the world? If you can do that. Yeah. Um, and it's because they will avoid having these, like they want to avoid having their top guys lose, but they're sacrificing the, the feeling of this being a sport when they do that. Another example is top guys not entering the tournament. So you've got the continental classic here and it's for these championships. It's got these great guys, like what a prestigious uh, tournament. How come Chris Jericho didn't enter? How come Kenny Omega is not yeah. in there? How come powerhouse Hobbs who squashed Jericho? What did he just not want to be in the tournament? Um, yeah. But you've got like Jay lethal in there and it's like, I, Hey, Jay lethal has never had a bad wrestling match in his life. As far as I can tell. Um, but like he's in there just because he's going to have good matches with people. Uh, but it doesn't make sense from a story perspective because he doesn't win matches like he doesn't ever win matches on tv so why is he in there like if you were a sports fan and you believed this was real you'd be like why is he in this tournament agreed a hundred percent like there is no reason for and it also i think these tournaments are meant to maybe get more people on the card and introduce new stars and stuff yeah but they don't yeah you know (laughs) like they don't and at the end of the day whoever wins this continental classic Mm-hmm. And because it's AEW, it'll probably be like someone who already has, you know, an ROH title and a trios <laughs> title or something like that. But um, like it, why do I care? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've and, always loved these style of tournaments, though, like the G1 that they do in Japan. Me too. Like, like it's very year. exciting. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once. No, but these round robin specific, like if you do one round robin tournament a year one single elimination tournament a year. That's perfect. You know, you could yeah. even do the same with tag teams or like a women's. Well, you definitely should do a women's tournament. Um, 
well, they do the Owen Hart, but like a women's yeah. continental uh, classic. I mean, they'll yeah. never do it because they only put one women's match on each show. So it would take like years to complete yeah. one tournament. Yeah. Um, Especially if they used everyone. Because they have a huge women's roster. We just never yeah. get to see them. Serena Deeb's coming back. Serena Deeb's one of my favorite wrestlers. She's fantastic. Uh, and she just announced that she... Uh, had a mm-hmm. medical issue that sounded kind of scary, but she's cleared and she's ready to go. So we'll have that. An interest. Okay, so there's some drama in a in AEW, and we only got a few minutes here, but I'll try and get it out as fast as I can. So Britt Baker, Sammy Guevara, and Jack Perry. First of all, why mm-hmm. Jack Perry's not back yet? That's interesting. Um, <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> intrigue. You know. Uh, <laughs> They got to release that tape. Somebody leak the security <laughs> footage of what happened backstage in Wembley, please. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. So she liked a tweet uh, of somebody who was being very critical of MJF. So did Sammy Guevara. So did, uh, uh, so did Jack Perry. Yeah. And sort of, it's like, Oh, oh and Britt Baker also put out a tweet uh, saying that she's gotten no live promo time in 2023. It was mm-hmm. like, Damn, is Britt Baker disgruntled? You've disgruntled Britt Baker. She was like the face of your division. And I thought the reason she hadn't been around for a while is because she had talked about having uh, like back mm-hmm. problems. So I was like, okay, she's probably nursing that injury. I figured they were letting her just be home with Adam Cole while he, you know, was sewn back together with scotch tape or whatever. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, th- just back with Adam Cole. So I was like, like, considering how important Adam Cole is to your show too, it's like, Mm. Have you really gotten to the point with Britt Baker where she's making public complaints about the company? Mm-hmm. Cause like, like, like I'm sure she's texted Tony Khan with this concern. If it's real, mm. everyone and if texts it's a, Tony. Yeah. And if it's an angle, if it's not real and she's like, this is just part of some angle and she's going to be part of the group that attacks uh, uh, MJF Maybe. or whatever. It's a dumb angle. Because like, you are you are faking that your company still has all this inner drama going on. When and, they do. <laughs> well, like, <laughs> either they do, either they still have this backstage mm-hmm. drama going on, or they're doing an angle where there's backstage drama going on, and neither situation is good. Yeah. Both are bad. I had a troublesome thought while you were talking. Mm-hmm. What if this is... Tony Khan's plan to become a Mr. Khan, aka Mr. McMahon style on screen authority figure, and that all these people talking smack about his company are the ones he's going to start punishing. And, you know, they're going to be seen as like rebels against the establishment. And he's going to be the establishment. They're going to take on the Stone Cold role, essentially. I think that would be a gigantic nightmare. <laughs> um, what percentage chance do you think there is of that happening? Because he has said specifically that he would never be a character on the show, but he's uh-huh. kind of been a character on the show. Like he's been he's out like there he's every Tony week. He, he's the ma- <laughs> like he's the matchmaker, right? When they yeah. when they say you know Tony Khan has made this match official. just this past week. Who was it went to his door and was like, "I'm going to talk to Tony Khan about my first match." Uh, Maria May was it? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's that sounds about yeah. right. I know it's M's, but yeah, <laughs> you know, so he's got a door like Mr. McMahon used to have, and so on and so forth. It's a, it's, you know, it's... I don't know. I I think I'd put the odds at like twenty five percent. Like I don't think like I I I would hope that there's enough people in AEW that would talk him out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like like Brian Danielson has his ear. I don't, I can't see Brian Danielson not going like, Tony, that's a terrible idea. You absolutely should not do that. I, 